Well, this is this is kind of a, obviously a foundational question. You know what, what 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 you're discussing here right now, because let's talk about the Olympics, right? There's right. there's a you know a diplomatic boycott has been announced and effectively here in the U.S. Uh, I think the UK is planning to follow suit. That's what it looks like anyway. Um, some other countries as well, possibly. Um, you know, at the same time, there's an Olympics happening as we speak. I've off, I've said this, you know, sort of on record. I mean, to me, it feels worse than the, you know, 1936 Olympics in Nazi Germany because we actually know what China is doing. You know, three, one, for sure, and, you know, Three genocides, um, and we're going. We're going to have an Olympic Games there, and even in Nazi Germany, we didn't even know exactly what the what the not German Nazis' intentions were. What do you think about this? Well, I think it's window dressing, to be honest with you. The um, I think that you need to let young people get together and do their sports. I mean, that we do because we celebrate people, you know, people's expertise. I mean, you know, bow and arrow or hunting or tennis. I mean, all these things are wonderful. Skiing. I mean, it's amazing what people do. This is part of that human creative spirit. The mistake I think we've made over time is to allow governments to, quote, sponsor the Olympics. You know, I mean, that's the, you know, when, when they become a national spectacle, they lose their, they become political and they're not sports anymore. You know, and, and so, you know, I've never been a fan of, of not letting the athletes participate. What I'm more concerned about is, is setting aside, we know what's going on in Xinjiang, for example. We know what's going on in Tibet. You know, but we're going to import solar panels, you know, made by slave labor in Xinjiang. You know, that, that we got to put our money where our mouth is, hmm. you know, and, and, it's the, and, and I say that deliberately with the emphasis on money, hmm. you know, because again, if I learned anything in the State Department, it's follow the money, you know, so the, the fact that you're not going to take a suite, you know, in the hotel in Beijing is not the money we're talking about. The money we're talking about is the money that goes to big companies, you know, that extract the ore and the, the minerals and, and then process them using slave labor. That's the money we're talking about. And that's what, that's why you can raise questions about, and as Congress did in the infrastructure bill, was, well, give us a report on how much carbon are you burning to build a solar panel? You know, how much slave labor is there in that supply chain? I will guarantee you that's going to be completely downplayed because that's where the money is. And where the money is, that's where you're not allowed to look? That's where you're not allowed, you're not supposed to look because that then blows up the Green New Deal. It then, because the reality is based on money, it's a Red New Deal because all, you know, China controls 95% of the solar panel market. You know, so all that money goes to China, you know, and, if, and, and American law currently forbids the importation of anything that's made with slave labor. Are we going to enforce that rule or not? If we're not going to enforce it, then don't tell me about, don't tell me about diplomatic pressure on China. It's, it's complete window dressing at that point. Well, you're talking about something much broader here. I mean, there's so many of these financial connections, you know, how many company, you know, Western companies were involved in developing the, the surveillance state in Xinjiang again, but, you right. know, and, and frankly throughout. And this has been something that's been in development for decades. I mean, there were, you know, U.S. companies involved in the development of this great firewall that keeps, you know, Absolutely. most Chinese yeah. uh, outside of the, I guess, the global information architecture, right? Well, you know, but you're not supposed to notice that. I mean, you recall from a few years ago when they talked about blood diamonds. I mean, that, that was a catchy phrase. You know, well, what phrase do you use for solar panels? I mean, it's, it's like at the blood end. Blood silicon. You know, blood, you know, it could be blood silicon. You know, it could be, you know, I don't know. I, I just don't know what you do. But, but the reality is that in this country, we have accepted the proposition 
that products are not to be made in environments where you discriminate on the basis of race or sex or anything else and we will hold those perpetrators accountable either by money you know by firing them by doing whatever right why can't we do that in the international sphere too you can't set in this country we haven't divided business and human rights why are we doing it with respect to china well, why? You tell me. Yeah, well, because there's too much money involved. There's a lot of corruption there. Look at LeBron James. I mean, he and I grew up in the same hometown. You know, and he refuses to acknowledge. He's so focused on his basketball that he's not focusing on the human rights things that he says he's so concerned about. It's either money or it's it, 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 it's, you know, I don't know. So, you know, it, it, this <laughs> makes me think of this broader, this broader question. Like, it's only really meaningful when it costs you something. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's interesting. It, it is. And it's also true that some of this stuff is so enormous that it's hard to get your head around what we're talking about. I mean, and, and that's why certain, that's why there's this narrative out there, you know, that the, why is it, for example, that China has an exemption on its carbon emissions until 2050, 2060, so that the rest of the world can pollute China, and then in virtue signal that we're all putting social, you know, we're all putting solar panels on our roofs, you know, what about the Tibetan Plateau? has five major world rivers and and the the downstream countries India Vietnam Cambodia I mean they're all really worried the the Chinese are going to shut off the water it's a you lot know, of leverage that's a lot of leverage and it's already starting you know the next big commodity that people are going to fight over is water you know, we see in our own west you know the fights over water I mean, when you get into international space with armies, that's serious business we're talking about. So this idea that you can somehow separate, uh, you know, business and human rights, you just can't. Well, and you raise this other question, you know, of this idea of kind of offshoring the, the things you don't want to be responsible for. Oh, yeah. I mean, we see that here in the United States. I mean... Where does most of California's electric power come from? It's not generated in California. You know, that the, the pollution is, is done outside. And in China, I mean, the part of the reason why you can buy cheap stuff from China is that the cost of pollution is, is borne by the people of China. It's got the most polluted air, the most polluted water. You know, and what, we, we get to take advantage of that you know, don't talk to me about human rights. <laughs> you know, if you're talking about the right to a clean environment, then, then maybe I should have to pay more. That's, that's implicitly one of the questions in the whole tariff question, is the Chinese have an advantage? You know, well, I mean, I saw an editorial in the New York Times, well, we all have to pay for it. Well, no pay, no gain. I mean, I should have to pay for it. If, if the choice is, you know, do I get a discount because a slave made, made the Christmas tree bulbs? That's a no-brainer. Most Americans would say, take it, you know, I'm, I'm not interested. You know, and the ones that, that are interested, nonetheless, don't talk to me about human rights, though.